Okay, so today is a look at the Cara Cara Orange. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here today. It's the end of December 2019. So now it is very, very cold this morning. <laughs> we've gotten a lot of rain here in the last couple weeks and we've got snow up in the mountains. Down here we're at about 40 degrees here and we are actually at the old property. So we wanted to give you guys a quick peek at a couple of varieties that we haven't gotten a harvest off of yet. And actually we're taking the first harvest of today. So this next to me here is our Cara Cara Orange. Cara Cara Oranges are actually a type of navel orange. So it essentially is an, a navel orange, a specific variety of navel oranges. They think it's some type of cross of a Washington navel and another variety. So now they've been around for quite some time. It sounds like they've actually been here in the United States for about 30 to 40 years. Um, however, they aren't really all that common because obviously the navel orange is dominated by the Washington navel oranges. There are a few things about the Cara Cara orange that make it unique in the whole range of different types of oranges. So we wanna talk about that, but before we do, let's talk a little bit about this tree. We've talked briefly about this tree, actually really just in passing as we were doing a couple of the different tours of the property. But the tree itself right now is right at three years old. We put it in the ground three years ago. It's up here at the front of the house and we've talked a little bit about this soil and I can tell you this soil is horrible. <laughs> I don't know what they brought in as far as fill dirt is concerned, but you know it really is more gravel than anything and really really thick um, pebbly type gravel. Obviously there's soil down here as well, but um, it's really Really, really bad. One thing I can tell you is that it does drain pretty well, which is obviously one advantage, but there's nothing in there. In addition, because we're at the front of the house and we're trying to make this actually look a little more attractive for our neighbors and of course eventually whoever's going to own this place, we did want to make sure that we did wood chips, but we also kind of kept them contained. So now one of the things we know as far as growth, you can see the tree itself is a little stunted. You know, we have a couple other trees that are about a year older than this that are two, even three times this size, and this tree definitely should be larger. However, because of the soil, also because of the rootstock, I know this is not your ideal rootstock. It's a citron rootstock. Um, so we're having some issues with the rootstock, having some issues with the soil, and then of course, how we're having to irrigate because we're dealing with a smaller area that's also affecting the growth of the tree. So typically we would see much better growth from a tree like this three years in. However, we are finding that we do have some fruit on the tree. So at three years old, we've got Got some fruit down here. Now you'll find that as your trees start to grow, you're going to get fruit down towards the bottom of the tree first, especially on citrus, because this is where you have your most mature wood, which is where you're getting your fruiting. So you get your flowering and your fruiting from that mature wood, and then of course the new growth that comes out from it. So now what we want to do, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the fruit down here. So let's squeeze in a little bit closer. Okay, so here we are on the back side of the tree. This is the part of the tree, this actually faces north, and this is where we're seeing all of our fruit set. So you can see we've got several different pieces of fruit in here. I've got, what, two, four, six, seven pieces of fruit down here on this really, really small tree, and all of them are a good size. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pick one that I think would look best on camera, and it looks like this guy right here. So if Lori wants to go ahead and slide in a little bit closer, Let's look at the fruit. So now the fruit you can see is a good size. So probably about the size of a baseball. Nice, beautiful orange, yellow kind of color. Probably could use another week or two on the tree, but definitely ripe. Navel, you can see that down there. That's the dead giveaway with your navel oranges. You can see that little, well, navel looking thing on the bottom uh, is your orange. So beautiful looking piece of fruit. So now what I wanna do, I wanna go ahead and cut this open so we can see what the fruit looks like inside. So now typically what I would do is just use some type of orange peeler and actually go ahead and peel this. That's typically how I would eat this orange, but I wanna go ahead and cut this open so you guys can see the flesh inside. And what I'm looking for and what I'm hoping for is that we'll have some color in here that's a little atypical. Oh, and yeah, look at that, we do. So you can see totally different looking flesh on the inside. If you guys haven't seen a Cara Cara before, as Lori slides in, you can see that different coloring. So much more pink in color as opposed to your typical navel orange, which is very, very, well, orange.
So now these have carotenoids in them, that's essentially what they're called, and lycopene is really what you're looking at in here. So that lycopene carotenoid has some advantages as far as heart health and things like that. You also get those in your red grapefruits, kind of like our ruby red grapefruit. So it does change the flavor just a bit from what I remember. Um, however, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a slice of this out of here. Let's try it and see what it tastes like. I have a piece of the fruit. Again, you can see how that half looks. And then I have a slice of it here. And again, you can see just that beautiful color. Again, kind of that pinkish kind of hue to it. And then, of course, all that being said, let's see what this tastes like. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness you guys oh wow Lori don't be jelly this is really good oh man I'll tell you what okay I have to say it because you know here we are middle of the cold and flu season and these oranges ripen up at just the perfect time everybody knows the health benefits of vitamin C you have that lycopene in there. And right now, the flavor, let me tell you, it tastes amazing. So, of course, I really don't need to describe the taste of an orange, I would assume, to you guys. And I know, looking at this, the first thing I think of when I see this fruit is I think, oh boy, I'm in for some tart because it looks like a grapefruit. However, I can tell you, it tastes nothing like a grapefruit. It tastes exactly like the navel orange that you would typically find in a grocery store. I would say that there's just a little bit, bitter's not the right word, tart's definitely not the right word, it's completely sweet, but it does have a little bit of a different taste, a little bit of a different flavor. And of course, whenever you have different types of things, like your different carotenoids in there, it can change the flavor slightly, but I can tell you, very, very sweet, really no tart at all. Uh, I do know I can see at least one or two seeds. Now, one of the things with our navel oranges here on this property, you can see behind me, I have our lemon tree up front here, which is a seeded variety. So because of that and the cross pollination that happens with these different fruits here on the property, we do get seeds in essentially all of our fruit. However, the typically seedless varieties, we have far fewer seeds than we do in other things like say our daisy mandarins that are just loaded with seeds. But this one here, very, very few seeds, probably just a couple of seeds, beautiful looking piece of fruit. Oh man, I'll tell you what, really, really good. Okay, so just a quick one today, wanted to share with you another variety of citrus. You know, as we go through the process of deciding on the different varieties, we weren't completely dead set on Cara Cara's. I'll tell you what, after trying that one, man, it's very, very good. You know, if I had to choose, we've talked a little bit about choosing varieties. The Arizona sweet varieties, I can tell you, are the premier tree for us to plant here in Arizona. Very, very sweet, highly, highly productive, wonderful fruit. But I can tell you this, the Cara Cara being a unique fruit has a little bit of a distinctive flavor, still very, very sweet. I love the fact that it has that lycopene in there, so that carotenoid in there that I know is good for my heart. It's got something in addition to the vitamin C and the other things we know about oranges. Really love this variety and I can tell you, it is definitely going into the ground at the new property. So just want to thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free, painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, it helps to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. We're going to get into someplace out of the wind because it is really, really cold. <laughs> And oh my goodness, my hands are frozen. <laughs> oh.